everyone, and welcome to a Time Shifters podcast, Time Hop Edition. This is Christopher here with Tom, as always. Tom, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm excited, and I'm kind of excited to talk about this film, because this is probably one of the ones I've enjoyed, uh, well, aside from like the uh, Back to the Mm -hmm. Drive-In, which I thought was really interesting. Some of our screeners for our Time Hops haven't been as wonderful as we'd like we we get a few every now and again and this ghost town from 2023 that it's one of the good ones for me yeah this one's not bad uh we can get into it a little but uh yeah we've had had a few where we've had to abandon it outright <laughs> <laughs> that is true uh anyway ghost town was writ- written directed and stars owen conway it's about a drifter walking through the desert who stumbles across a small town he takes a job at the local saloon. Four long, strange occurrences start taking place, and he finds himself guilty of killing an unarmed man. Friends become enemies, and some may not even exist. This Old West ghost story started streaming on March 7th. And that's a really just a couple sentences to try to like encapsulate this film, but it's really hard to try to come up with a description of this film without... And it's going to be hard talking about this yes. film without spoiling the hell out of it yeah and and we discussed this ahead of that is there are so many elements to get into and how to do it without giving everything away right off the bat i think i really like the fact that i think they got away with it doing an old west setting yes i'm not sure where this was filmed there's no information i can find uh as far as where they actually filmed this but I mean, it looked like a legitimate, like like a historic Old West town sort of thing. Yeah. With real buildings and, 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 and all that. And it, it really worked. They they made it work. This is one where, uh, for a low-budget film, they did a very effective job with what they had. They they knew where to put the camera. They knew where to, uh, where to add elements, where to let it go. Um, it was effective in that way. I would imagine this is kind of one of these things where lots of different buildings from who knows where were all like disassembled and reassembled in some sort of park or some some historic area. And maybe maybe the house that he was sleeping in was probably actually right next door to the saloon. But the way they shot it, it, it feels like it's down the street or on the outskirts of town. I mean, it all really... <laughs> They did a great job. The funny thing is the town itself kind of felt like one of those, uh, it's kind of like they, one of those tourist Old West towns that they just kicked everybody out of and, and just let us have it for a couple of days to shoot or whatever. Yeah, yeah. when's your, when's your off season? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Give us a weekend. Was it reminding me like one of those Old West towns like out of uh, the vacation film? <laughs> yes, yes. No, and I think that's exactly what it was. But yeah, like I said, they they managed to, and as you said, they managed to shoot everything right. They knew exactly where to put the camera. Yep. And they made it work to where it's like, yeah, I don't think you're going to convince anyone that you're really in the old west no. or anything. But for 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 this film, it yeah, I keep saying it worked, and I guess I should stop and we'll move on <laughs> because I'll just keep saying that. <laughs> I was looking around as much as I could for any inaccuracies that I could find. Uh, anything that just seemed out of place or whatever. Oh, you're looking for the thing that doesn't fit in the time period? Yeah, anything for in, that was anachronistic. You know, did I did I catch somebody with you know clothes or, or, or a watch or yeah, something that they watch, shouldn't have? A pair of sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really... I didn't spot anything. Nothing really stood out. I'm sure there's people that could look at this and uh well, that cash register wasn't invented until uh, 1902 and or something right. like that. But uh, I I couldn't spot anything. Everybody's clothes looked good. Uh, the set pieces all looked good. I imagine they worked a lot with whatever touristy <laughs> uh, Old West town this was. But the uh, the clothes and everything all seem to really fit and work. Don't overthink it. Don't overdo it. Kind of film. Maybe there would be some uh, some language uh, and and phrases that were used that maybe wouldn't have been 
in the 1800s or something like that, but... Yeah, I caught a few things that that seemed a little too current in, v, in speech pattern. I mean, you can let it roll off pretty easily, but there were a couple of them like, uh, I don't know that they would have said that that way then. <laughs> yes. Well, I tell you, whether he should have been saying it that way or not, the thing, the person, the character that really pulls this movie up above for me was uh, the actor Robert Sprayberry as Hagen, mm -hmm. the uh, saloon owner. I thought he was brilliant. <laughs> the lines he had and how he spit them out was just, it, it made the film for me. My only struggle with him, and again, try not to get in, into things too much here uh, related to this, but uh, the only thing I struggle with is he kept bouncing a little bit between uh, being compassionate and then just being an asshole. I, th I think that's just that that was that character. I don't think that was a mistake. I think that was the character, and that's the way he was written. And that actor, he did it effortlessly. Oh, I and the other characters in the film, the the uh, the various prostitutes that were working in his uh, bar, um, they they were keen to point out when his personality would shift as well. So it's supposed to go with the character. I just there were times I found it a little jarring, like mm. oh wow, you care until all of a sudden you decide you didn't hear something quite right. And now ever all hell's broken loose. Owen Conway, as I said, does star, and he's uh, Solomon, yep. the lead character in, in the film. Uh, again, you know, I don't know anything about this actor. I have not seen him in anything else, but I, I thought he, I thought he did really well. No, given the desperation that was slowly building in the character throughout, mm -hmm. starts off kind. Of, he's already kind of desperate, but starts off. Uh, more hopeful he's got a shot here to maybe pull life together and you're just watching it decay out from under him as the movie progresses that uh and the way he handled that going through it and the kind of madness that started to set in as a result uh yeah he was really good yeah i like that in the beginning when some of the really crazy crap would happen or or hagen would go and jump down his throat for nothing or whatever he he starts out with taking it just like i can't believe this is happening to me yeah. and slowly it just turns into i'm really getting pissed yeah <laughs> that this is happening to me <laughs> yeah no there, there there are those moments where you're like i'm surprised he hasn't belted him yet because <laughs> mm -hmm. i probably would have already at this point <laughs> yeah 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 solomon had all the, had the patience of a saint when he came to hagen well, and then that's uh, that was a thing about the the character, and and maybe one of my drawbacks for the film. Not that you need everything revealed all the time. I'm big on leaving some mystery, um, but it's clear that uh, even this character, and you could get into the more all encompassing what he is, who he was in the film, because a Without getting into spoilers, as you described earlier, it's not clear who's actually there and not. <laughs> because, again, this when it, it's called Ghost Town for a reason. Um, so as they progress with this, uh, he clearly has a backstory. Things have gone wrong for him and not that long ago, which is how he ended up here. But we don't, uh, you don't get a sense of what all that was enough to know why it's driving him crazy. To talk a little bit about the story without giving details or way yeah. or whatever, it's a good little mystery. I feel like it, it, it builds, you don't know what's going on. You're not exactly sure what's happening. And little by little, you get drawn in and it's not like you really get any explanations. No. But you find yourself invested because you 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 want to know what in the world is going on. Yeah, uh, it, it, I mean, it's got some clear clear uh, religious overtones, some spiritual overtones. An analogy could be made 
for the story taking place almost in like a purgatory of a sort, whether whether real or imagined. Um, and, but that's where uh, that's where it's good, but it could be better. It's kind of hard to plant it in what yeah. you're trying to convey. There's a message there. I think I get where they're going with it, but I don't know that they really grab it entirely. What may be my biggest complaint of the film, and for me, it it doesn't take away my enjoyment of the film, mm -hmm. but for others, I could see where it would be a little bit bigger of a deal, is this film, I don't think, truly sticks the landing. When you have kind of get your explanation, or as much as you're going to get it at the end, yes. you got to sit there and do the math yourself. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but in a film like this, I, I feel like it should have been uh, telegraphed a little bit more. Well, and it's a struggle I have with movies. It's a movie that didn't know where to end, so it had an ending to the ending, which yeah. only made you kind of go, what? <laughs> yeah, the, it, it, that, and that's what I mean. The epilogue is what I think just... It just like, took me out of it. It, yeah, I, I I got what they were trying to do, but I don't think they really did it as well as it. It just maybe needed just another try. A case could be made for eliminate the epilogue component altogether and just end it at the last thing that happens in the town with Solomon. Mm hmm. And leave it at that. I think that yeah. would have left you in a good place. That would have left you in a... Oh, okay, I kind of know what happened. And wow, that that's a hell of a way to end. And Yeah. And, and you could have gone out on a gasp. Instead, we got this little other pit, part that kind of watered it down. Yeah, no, I think I agree. I, I confused it. I mean, I didn't really know what that was about. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, you had to sit there and think, what are they? Oh, okay. I literally had to sit there and sort of explain it to my wife, uh -huh. but in the same way kind of explain it to myself in order to make sense of it. Maybe I should have called you when it was over, because, yeah, I, <laughs> I saw that part, and I'm like, I really don't get why this is here. <laughs> but overall, I think there's some great acting. It's a great use of the, you know, the available sets. And props and and, and costumes, uh, just mm, yeah, that ending. I just I just wish it were a little different. Yeah, no, I, exactly. But no, very very well put together. Again, it, it's we always have an appreciation for when people can do great things with little available resources. They didn't try to stretch more than they need to. A lot of times when you do a western. Um, the thing that made Westerns fun for for as long as they were really, really a thing is the concept of the wide open vistas and, and the big scenery that one could put in there. And this was not a movie that had budget for big scenery. So doing with what they had was amazing. Yeah, I I would still recommend this uh, for folks to check out. I You know, if you're into a... a, a a minor horror. This is not your film that you're not going to get a ton of gore. You're not going to get any jump scares or anything like that. But if you want, like, a, just maybe a little bit of a, a touch of a psychological and a little bit of a ghost story, and to see it set in an old west period piece like this, uh, yeah, definitely go and check this one out. Like I said, it, it uh, March seventh it came out, so it's available now. Go and check your streaming service to see if you can dig it up. Um, yeah, and, you know, come back and let us know what you thought of it, because even Tom and I aren't sure <laughs> what we thought of it. Oh, uh, and, and, and in case uh, Chris has forgotten, there's a couple of gore scenes. There uh, there, there, there were some bodily body parts and, and fluids and such that uh, that were laid out, and they're only brief, but uh, yep, keep, very, keep very good point. when doing. Yes, yep, very good point. And the occasional, you know, gunshot and blood. But, uh, there, yeah, there was some uh, entrails or something maybe, wasn't there? Yeah, no, there was, was some brains mopped up and there was some guts laying out. And, uh, 
it was cl- it was concise and it was somebody having fun with what little effect budget they had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they spent it all on the rental of this uh, this ghost town. I could make it intestines, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's going to do it for this time hop. Go check out Ghost Town, for an American terror from 2023, and uh, come back and let us know what you thought of it. Uh, we'll be back in a week with a full episode. Until then, thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. See ya.